What's going on guys, Billy here, and over the past four years, I've built my drone business from the ground up, and I've also done this alongside starting my YouTube channel, so it's crazy to say, but I've been uploading videos to this channel for almost four years, which it just doesn't feel like that much time has passed whatsoever, but the good thing about doing both of these things at the same time is that I learn from both of them, and I can incorporate tactics into both of them that I learned from the other, and I think that this actually reflects in the content I upload here to my channel. Channel because I feel like I have a lot of really great information I can share with my audience with you guys watching this video because I fly drones like the Mavic 2 every day not only for fun to shoot photos and videos that I post on YouTube and Instagram but I also use these drones for business related purposes that gives me a really good insight in the drone industry now the other day I was working on a project here in Philadelphia for one of my clients specifically speaking I was shooting photos and videos to document the current progress of the steeple restoration project over at Christchurch, and this has got to be in the top 10 for my coolest favorite projects that I've ever done. Being able to shoot photos and videos of such an old, historic, beautiful building is something that is right in my wheelhouse. Now, while I was on this project, I kind of got thinking to myself, what are some tips that I can share with you guys watching this video right now on how to elevate your drone business, right? Because maybe you've laid the grassroots for your business, you've done a few jobs here and there, you've made some connections, but what are the things that you can do to help elevate your drone own business to the next level. Well, that's what I'm going to go over in this video. I'm going to give you guys five tips on how to elevate your drone business. And I'm assuming that the people watching this video have already done some of the necessary things like create an LLC, create business cards, maybe make a website, create some social media pages and start some buzz up about your company. Because honestly, that's something anybody should do for any business that they're starting. But what I want to do is go over five specific things that relate to the drone industry that'll help you elevate your drone business. The first thing, we'll start off with here is diversify. Something that I soon found out when I first started my drone business is that within the drone industry, there are smaller sectors, right? There's agriculture, there's construction, there's inspections, there's mining, there's real estate. There is so many of these small little sectors and brand new sectors pop up each and every day, right? Like drone deliveries becoming so big. And I went into this whole drone thing saying, I'm only gonna shoot drone videos for construction companies. Well, how many construction companies do you think only need drone video? Not a lot. They also want photos. They also want mapping sometimes, right? There are so many different sectors so the first tip on my list of five tips to help you elevate your drone business is diversify. Make yourself available to do more things than just one specific niche, right? Don't go out there thinking I'm only going to serve construction companies and I'm only shooting photos because chances are if you don't master all of these traits, then a construction company or a potential client might choose somebody else that can. I learned this the hard way because I've definitely missed out on working with certain people because I don't offer specific services or I didn't offer specific services in my beginning stages of this business. But since then, I've brought it out. I'm now shooting for real estate agents. I'm shooting for construction companies. I'm shooting for structural engineers. I'm shooting for people who have farms and I'm catering to their needs. So for construction, maybe you're focusing on closer up areas of a building and maybe for real estate agents, you're focusing on the larger property. So you've got to understand how to diversify and diversify well to meet the needs of your different clients with your drone. Now, if you want to take this to the next level, I think it's smart to also diversify and offer ground video and ground photo because that makes you the full complete package, especially when we're talking about real estate, right? Because not many agents are just hiring photographers to only shoot drone video. They also need interior photos, exterior photos from the ground. So don't only offer drone services, use a real camera, get out there, diversify. That's probably the biggest tip that I can share with you guys about jumping into the drone industry. Don't be so hard headed, get out there and diversify. Now, moving on to the next tip on our list. When you think of a drone, right? You think of all the different components. You've got the hole, the battery, the motors, the propellers, everything, but all of that is surrounded around the camera. This right here is what's going to make you money in your drone business because a lot of the things that go on in this industry revolves around aerial images, photos and videos taken from the sky. So if this is one of the most important things, then that means that learning how to use it is very important. That's why the second tip on how to elevate your drone business is learning good shot composition, learning how to properly expose your images, and also just learning basic camera knowledge. When I think of the people that make up the drone industry, I break them up into 
to three different people. There's those that were photographers and videographers that want an aerial based platform to shoot aerial images. You've got pilots, people who maybe potentially originally flew like model airplanes, or maybe people that originally flew manned airplanes or say manned helicopters that want something that's unmanned. And then you've got people that just think that it looks cool and aren't from either of those groups of people. And I find that when people are trying to start a drone business and they come from a photography or videography background, they likely have an easier transition because it's easy to get down the controls of the drone. These things honestly fly themselves at this point with the different sensors and the different intelligent flight modes. But being able to compose a shot, properly expose it, and also having basic camera knowledge really does give the photographers and videographers that start a drone business a leg up. And I would say that if you're somebody who doesn't have much experience using a camera, use your phone, pick up an old DSLR, go and buy a camera that's used and get to know how to properly compose your shots and learn some of the different tactics on how to nail your exposure. Learning things like the aperture, the ISO, the shutter, because all those things come into play no matter what you're doing in the drone industry. When you're mapping, you need to know that you need to use a higher shutter speed so that the picture is not going to be all blurry. When you're shooting real estate photos, you want to know that you're using a high aperture so that none of the uh, photo is going to be out of focus. When you're shooting construction, you might want to use a higher shutter speed so that you freeze all the motion in the frame because there could be a dump truck dumping dirt out. They could be pouring cement. Workers could be working. You want to make sure you freeze all that action. So a lot of the camera basics are going to apply when you're flying drones. And if you don't have that background already, it could be a little bit tough. So to help elevate your drone business, my second tip is to make sure you get out there and you learn the basics of how to shoot with a camera because it's going to help you a ton when you get into shooting photos and videos with a drone. Now, moving into the third tip on our list, it would be to purchase aviation insurance for your drone business. You might be sitting there watching this video scratching your head like, why do I need aviation insurance? I'm not flying a plane, I'm not flying a helicopter, but uh, crazy enough, drones are lumped in with those types of vehicles. So I shopped around for a couple of different quotes for small business insurance. Uh, specifically, I went with State Farm. A lot of the other people turned me down instantly as soon as I said anything about drones. They say, we don't insure aircraft. And that was pretty much the end of the conversation right there. But I got as far as getting a certificate of insurance with State Farm. I was covered for about a month and then they dropped me because they ultimately didn't cover aircraft. So from there, I went with Bullock Agency Inc. This is in no way sponsored by them, but I just want to give them a friendly plug here because they really did help me out in a pinch. I got my certificate of insurance in like literally a day from them. They're very fast working. They give you a portal, you log in. It's very easy. I've got my Mavic two insured. I've got my Inspire two insured. Uh, I've also got up to like $2 million of liability insurance, I believe. And I only spend like $1,500 per year. So it's very affordable. It's very good specifically with Bullock agency, but shop around, see if you guys can get better quotes because in order to take yourself to the next level, your business to the next level, you're going to have to have insurance because while you can do some one-off jobs for a construction company, maybe for like a smaller home, or maybe if you're working for like a real estate agent, they might not ask for for your uh, insurance. They might not even ask for your part 107, but for the larger projects, like the one I was telling you about with Christchurch, they required insurance immediately. It was like a no brainer. I had to have it. So to elevate your drone business, definitely want to get some aviation insurance. Now, moving on to the fourth thing here, understand what equipment you need, not what equipment you want. This is something that I can speak about from experience. And I think that anybody who flies drones, anybody who is a photographer or a videographer knows the struggle of wanting every piece of gear that you get your eyes on, right? First, you want the camera, then you want the lights, then you want the microphones, and then you want the different flashes. I mean, there is so many different things to go out there and buy, but there's got to be a limit that you reach and you say, look, I don't need any more. And when we're talking about a specific drone business, there's really not a whole lot that you need. So it might be easy to say, look, I'm starting a drone business. I need to go out and buy an Inspire. I need a Mavic 2 for this job. I need a Phantom for this job. Oh, I might need a Matrice for this job because I might get a thermal job. Think about the different types of work you have lined up and then figure out what gear you might need, right? I can tell you that for 99% of the jobs that I have and that I've gotten in the past, 
The Mavic 2 has worked fine for mapping, even though it doesn't have the mechanical shutter. I've gotten around it. For construction, it's been great. Shooting video for real estate, it's been perfect. This is such a great all-around drone. This price fluctuates a little bit. I know it started out at like $1,550. Now it might be up in the 1700s. I did see that they just had a price reduction, but look, in order to elevate your drone business, you've got to make money and you've got to make sure you can simplify everything to a point where you're efficient and where you're able to work at a good pace because you might be doing multiple shoots in a day and there's nothing easier than using the Mavic 2. It's so small, fits in a sweatshirt pocket. I carry this in my backpack with me along with three other batteries and a remote controller and I'm up in the air working on basically any drone job that I've got. So look, you've got to understand that you need to kind of think about what equipment you need, you absolutely need and not what you want because it's easy to get carried away and that's an easy way to go bankrupt <laughs> and not start a company properly. So just think about what you need and not what you want. Now, getting into the final tip here on our list, perform frequent aircraft diagnostics. Now to give you guys a little bit of insight as to why I even added this on the list, I was flying my Phantom 4 when I first bought it around a project that my dad was working on. And as I was orbiting, I got the drone stuck up in a tree. Now, as you guys can imagine, I was embarrassed. People were looking at me, especially my dad, like you don't know how to fly this thing. But imagine if you were on a paid shoot with a client with a tight deadline that needed to be done that day, and let's say it was a big job and your drone just falls from the sky. Well, your client is then gonna think that you're untrustworthy. They're gonna think you're incapable of getting the job done. They're probably gonna start worrying that you're going to damage property because you've got this drone that doesn't operate properly. So while my story doesn't directly correlate to like aircraft maintenance and diagnostics, it's something you really need to keep an eye on because as you start flying your drones more and more, you're putting more wear on the motors, on the battery, things begin to deteriorate. I can say that with my Mavic 2 right now, three of the four batteries I have are swollen. And when I land the drone, it's actually popping up. I tweeted about this. I told you guys never to fly with swollen batteries. And for me, it's gotten to the point where I'm leaving my swollen batteries at home. And if I wasn't vigilant and paying attention, I could be on a shoot using one of those swollen batteries and my drone comes tumbling from the sky. And I would be out almost $2,000 or $1,900 because the Mavic 2 is really not that cheap. So performing frequent aircraft diagnostics, checkups, is really just the, the, the key a component of taking your drone business to the next level, being able to manage your fleet. And I hate even bringing this up because you're gonna think that again, this is sponsored video, but I use air data in order to kind of keep track of all of my drones from the Spark all the way up to the Inspire 2. It gives me a lot of really great analytical data. And if you don't wanna pay for that, you can also just use DJI's built-in flight record option. So you can see how long your drone has flown for. You can see how many times like a battery has been charged through the DJI Go application. So there's a lot of great information in there, but I would say in order to elevate your drone business, be sure that you're on top of that because the last thing you need is something going wrong on a shoot and you're not able to deliver for a client. So guys, that wraps up my five tips on how to elevate your drone business. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comment section below and let me know if you enjoyed this video because I've got plenty of other tips I can share with you guys and maybe we can turn this into a little series. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.